Hi, everybody. We here at Moosedabber Studios appreciate you tuning in to see our tabletop RPG streams. Some of the content of our streams may be a bit mature and cause emotional responses in viewers. We really take the well-being of our viewers very seriously, and we want you to do what you need to if something triggers you. Mute the stream, take a break, or just skip an episode. Otherwise, if you decide to stay tuned in, we are available in chat during the streams to talk you through it if you need that. Thank you so much, and we hope you enjoy this game session. Which again bringing you some news from around the town. It seems some of the kindred of DC were seen in a little bit of a fight outside of town. It seems somebody got staked and taken back to the Succubus Club. I wonder who that is. And then, oh, Anton was sighted at the Succubus Club too. And it seems Quartermain has been exiled, never to return. I wonder how that's going to end. This week, we're brought to you by Aluka Blood Product Services. Aluka. That's blood, come on! <laughs> Free range, ethically sourced, cruelty free, certified humane, organic blood products. Blood. Delivered by our conscientious and discreet private fleet. Secret. We make sure our stock is local, sustainable, and diverse enough to suit even the most discriminating tastes. Taste. Aluka, blood product services. Tapping the potential of blood. Good evening and welcome to McStabber Studios DC by night. I am the storyteller, Shanky McStabber. And I'm Relin Dare, Shanky's wife, and I'm playing Lily Sanger, Toreador. I'm Lance, I play Steve Perry, and Kaitif. I'm Katie, I play Locke, um, not Hound of DC, but still owner of Purgatory. Still owner of Purgatory, that's correct. And when we last left off for this chronicle here in D.C., Quartermain had done something rather shocking and rather amazing in a lot of ways and had taken the blame for something that the whole coterie was involved in, but was exiled. We're going to pick up essentially the same scene where we had left off last time. The coterie is at the conference room at the Succubus Club and Quartermain has left, leaving the three of them alone. And uh, this is where we begin. Hmm. Locke looks gutted. Yeah, Steve. Steve looks pretty, pretty down about it too. I mean, he, he did like Quartermain. Well, that was certainly one way to get us off the hook. But it makes it seem more obvious now why Quartermain was always having a back when we were going into a big fight. Like, well, he, he was ready to go one way or another. Lock. Use your words, dear. Fucking asshole. And she gets up and starts to go out. <laughs> 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 and Lily follows her and says, Locke, would you like for Scott to take you back to Purgatory with our prisoner? 
Yeah, I've got to deal with that. Okay. And I get on the horn and tell Scott. Um, uh, yeah, Scott is back. The other guards are not well, there. Well, Scott the drove us, so right. yeah. Scott and Ian are at the club. Okay. Uh, but Ian's going to stay at the Jeff club. Jeff and Thomas still aren't there yet because they were helping Bria with Okay, with extricating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I tell Scott, um, Locke needs a ride to Purgatory and drop off the package in her garage. Yes, ma'am. Um, is it going to, I mean, it's not going to jump off. No, no, no. Okay, just checking. You'll be fine. And she's got your back in case something happens. Okay, because, I mean. I, I'm sure Locke won't, I don't know won't, a lot won't about let my, 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 one of my boys get broken. I so. know, <laughs> I don't know a lot about your condition, but I'm pretty sure that, that it's not going to be happy when it wakes up. Yeah, well, you won't be there, darling. You come right back after you drop them off, okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. ma'am. And Locke, uh, Scott takes you out to the, the, the same escalade that you guys come in with. Um, and, yep, the, the gangrel is still in the back. Mm-hmm. Um, still staked. It hasn't unstaked itself somehow. Good. Uh, that would <laughs> there be are a, ways. A, there, there are ways. There are ways. Yes, there is. Two ways I know of. <laughs> yeah. There are ways. Sad, but it's true. Um, but Scott takes you over to Purgatory and when you arrive there, of course, it's getting late in the night, and yeah. Purgatory at this point is, is close to closing time. Though the Vikings are still there, because half of them you have to kick out when you closed, yeah. you're closed, kind of a thing. But mm-hmm. Scott pulls around to your garage to, to back up so that they can, you and him can bring him bring the body in. Where do you bring the body? Um, Let's see. I put him in... Because if you, as you, if you recall, your bar has your your ground floor, which has your two bar areas, but there is a second floor to it that's your yeah. storage, other things. Yeah, I put them in other. Um, <laughs> so I get, um, I find some handcuffs or some shit that she keeps around. Um, it's not going to stop him if he wakes up, but hopefully it'll stop him long enough. Um, and she locks him up in one of the storage rooms okay. um pops slinky down and she's you you tell me if, if this if any noise comes from in there like come get me he smells nasty oh yeah I don't, don't eat, eat him. him no please don't um and she is going to um text tabitha okay say, I'm going to need your help tomorrow. Because I'm assuming there's not enough time to deal with this. Not bullshit. really. It's close to after all the stuff yeah. that's going on. It's been yeah. a long night. Like, I'm going to need your help tomorrow. Gotcha. Need BL too? Uh, no. Family business. Ah, okay. I'll be there 1030. Um, okay. Because so. you're in the summer months and it's or towards the end of the summer months at this point, but it's still the summer months and it's I mean, it's not even dark really till nine. Yeah, she texts um, whoever manages this place during the day, um, and says, "Bar's closed tomorrow. Closed, closed. Okay. Gas leak. Okay. So it's actually goes, during the day. It's one of the other bartenders. One of them that Jack yeah. had recommended that mm-hmm. him and Bjorn were like this, so that he knows the he doesn't know exactly about vampires, but he does know that." You know, there's strange commands that come down that you just... You follow. You follow. (laughs) And she just goes back to her little hovel of a basement apartment that, you know, is hers. And she just kind of curls up in a corner and goes to... Just passes out. Okay. And what is Steve and Lily doing after Locke has left Scott? You guys having a short talk or you... If Steve feels he needs to. I'm just kind of processing it internal, internally, but not core to me. Really not a lot to say about it. Okay. We are so good at emotions, you guys. We are so good at emotions. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure how you're feeling, Steve. But if you decide you need to talk, I have an ear. All right. I- I appreciate that very much, but right at the moment... I'm... You're fine. Okay. 
I have some things I need to take care of before I call it a day. Okay. And where is Steve staying tonight? At the club or at his... I'm going to go to New Haven. My New Haven. I'll go. Okay. Okay. Takes his car that has a new trunk on it, at least. Because that did get finished before the two-month skip. Mm -hmm. And he takes it over to his haven. What is Lily planning to do before she sleeps? I send a text to a friend. Mm -hmm. Things sure change quickly in the city. I'd like to collect what's mine. Let the boss know I will fulfill my end of the bargain. Comes back. Let him know. Probably won't be happy. I'm happy to discuss with him if he would like further details. I'll let him know. And then I go down and see Raphael. Okay. And Raphael is... He's been getting out a little bit Mm -hmm. more doing his thing, but, you know, he's still coming back here because he does have another haven. He just isn't ready to be... As you've told him, it's best for him not to stay at it right now until uh, the Stanford situation mm-hmm. has been solved so he is still staying with you for now mm-hmm. and I walk in with a smile on my face good news darling okay soon the prince will be dead okay do we do we get to pour him out <laughs> no, I think higher ranking officials okay, than so us will do it. You've taught me a lot about this. Mm-hmm. That would mean that Anton or someone like him came back, right? Uh-huh. Anton is back. Okay. Okay. And he's gotten what he needs to call an end to Stanford and his line. That's one of the traditions, isn't it? Yes, it is. See, I'm, I've been listening. And yes, learning. I know. It, it and you rough, are nearly was, ready for presentation. Rough, but I, I've been learning this. Yes, I'm finally getting this down. You have. Um, so, but who's going to replace him? I know that, I know I've heard you and a few others, Natalie, had mentioned Karina, but. Yeah, I'll have to talk with her and see if I can't convince her that now is her time. But. Ultimately, it's whoever can, that can claim Praxis can actually succeed in securing it. I mean, there's not that many of us, so I guess it doesn't take many on their side to, to give them the, the over, overall support. It's just a question of who. Right. And I firmly, you know, if, if Karina doesn't put herself forward, I am rather certain the tower will send who they feel is appropriate to ensure stability. That sounds like rolling the dice in some ways, but I oh, guess it's course. better than, I mean, you roll the dice every time. And Hopefully it'll be better than Stanford. Well, <laughs> as long as they don't send us a fire bug, I think you've already accomplished that better than Stanford part. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because that's... Do you know when you're going to get to see Wayland again? Because I, I, I want to go next time. I think he'll be joining us soon. Okay. I, okay. With, with Stanford, I, 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 with Stanford address, the threats to him are no longer valid. Okay. Well, yeah. If so, you can work that, go ahead. I mean, I'm trying. You know, I haven't got to see him. In, I mean, you saw him, but I yeah, take your I word did. for it. But you know, he'll be happy to see you. Yeah, I'm sure. I got some words to have about with him about pushing me instead of saving himself and all that good stuff I, I still got you know a bone to pick with him over that one so uh, we'll see how that goes uh huh yeah but hopefully we will have him soon hopefully and you settle down for daytime mm-hmm. and I actually head back up to my quarters you head up you're sleeping in your quarters tonight mm-hmm. okay you've been doing that a little bit more than mm-hmm. now that he's no longer healing and mm-hmm. now that he's a little bit more aware of I'm not taking advantage of a vulnerable childer I mean (laughs) that's a thing it is a thing but that's not Lily's thing (laughs) no tooth banging until he's totally with it exactly no cougar (laughs) she doesn't want to be a full cougar she just wants to be you know just a little cougar yeah (laughs) you know she likes to inspire the loyalty but it's not so sure that the crush is valid because he's very vulnerable (laughs) Even after two months, he's in a position where he can't afford to piss you off. Right. Right. Unless he wants to be firebombed. Yeah. 
So, so you bed down for the day. Mm-hmm. And with the daylight comes, of course, the sleep of the dead. Even Lance has the sleep of the dead. Or sorry, Steve Perry has sleep of the dead. Should just call, call Karn and Brian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as the sleep of the dead and with uh, the setting of the sun you rise again so everybody can roll their rouse checks I succeeded I'm still at zero hunger I'm a bit hungry now at two you're at two that's something that Steve is losing that uh, your partner that used to go out hunting with you quite a bit was Quartermain Mm-hmm. That's right. As your as your backup, yeah, it's gonna make hunting a little more interesting because right. Locke's method of hunting doesn't really help you as much. No, <laughs> no. But Lily may be making arrangements for refreshments at her club. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Locks too. Yeah, Locke's, <laughs> Locke's been working with two different people for some of the arrangements. Uh huh. And same with Lily. Yeah, I mean, Lily... Just remember, you know, Locke doesn't need the really good stuff. Like yeah. if you're plumbing it. Because you know. Lily's arranging from Philo a lot of stuff, and Locke is arranging from True Death. And True Death did supply for his show, for his so, show, so but, she was able to sample the goods. Yeah, so there's mm-hmm. there's you know two different circulatory systems in town uh-huh. that the Coterie knows about now that is supplying shit. So uh-huh. it's a very interesting thing. So what is everyone's plans for this new day? Locke gets right, Locke has a thing at ten thirty. Locke goes directly to her bar. Okay. Yeah, just she goes straight there to make sure that everything is where it should be. Including the man that was staked and stuck in a in a supply closet. Yep. That's not fully a supply closet. It's a little bigger than that. It's a storage room. It's just one that you don't have filled yet because, I mean, I don't, yeah, you don't have a big, the bar is not that big. It has a steady clientele, good money, but it's not hit the point yet where you really need to use like three rooms to hold all your liquor. Mm-hmm. So, what's Lily doing? Is Thomas back to do his report? Yes, all of them are back this next day. Okay. It's a whole other day. Okay. So, I sit and get report from Thomas. Um, ma'am, the news is calling what happened over in that building. Uh, there seemed to have been a uh, a little bit of uh, carbon monoxide buildup mm-hmm. caused by old furnaces mm-hmm. uh, that suffocated some people. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I know from speaking to Ian and Scott that the bodies were actually in the parking lot, but um, that's not what the news reports are saying. They were found in the basement, mm-hmm. and there seems to have been some gangland fights going on there at the time, mm-hmm. and... Um, it's still pretty big on the news right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not nearly as good of a cleanup job as normally. That's okay. Uh, I've seen happening from from around town. I wasn't there. Well, no, nobody's been. There's no witnesses <laughs> or anything. So you it's know, fine. They made a point to say the camera system was stolen. Uh huh. So they're on the lookout for the camera system. Okay. Well, I don't have it. So. And anyone with tips. Uh huh. So. Okay. Yeah, other than that, ma'am, it's been pretty quiet today for the news. Okay. Um. And this is a night the bar is closed, or the club is closed normally. Okay. Because it was uh, Sunday when you came back. Was it? Yeah. I it don't was, know what day of the No, it was an was. open night, and which makes this a closed night. So, yes, we're closed. Uh, okay. It's a closed night. I, I'm losing track of days at this point. Yep. Um, we always do. You have eternity. <sighs> Good. Good. Okay. So, everyone's been relocated to safe. Yes, locations. ma'am. I, uh, okay. I, I don't need Bria. to know where. I, I, we helped Bria to get them all moved to a, a, another place. Okay. Good. Good. I'm expecting to hear from her or her brother soon. Yes, ma'am. Uh, do you know his name? Kent. Kent. Yes, ma'am. If we hear from him, we'll let you know immediately. Okay. Thank you. Um, because I do have some business to discuss with him. He's not aware of that, but I do have some business to discuss with him. So. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Um, anything else I need to be apprised of? No, not that, I mean, it's the normal city stuff. Staff are all doing okay? Uh, Generally. Um, we had one call out sick today, but 
I mean, there's always one sick. Who called out sick? Um, Stan. He's one of the other. It, you, you'll you'd rec- you'd probably don't recognize the name, but you'd recognize him. He's the one that was low key that doesn't seem to do anything. That I mean, he huh. works, but he's he's never. He's one of the paycheck guys, you know. I got you. I got you. How many times has he called out sick? Um, not many. It just he called out. I think the the twenty four seven rotating shifts is starting to get to some of the guys. We've been doing this a while. It'll be over soon. Yeah, and I think it's starting to take its toll that people. It'll be over soon. Are needing some time here. Yeah, and and I will make sure I give them ample compensation to ensure that they are able to take some nice vacations. Okay, man. Yeah, because um, it's it's getting to them. Yeah. Um. Okay, good. All right. Well, thank you so much, Thomas. No problem, ma'am. Um, I have a, you know, a few things to handle, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be going out tonight or not, but we shall see. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So what is Steve doing after he wakes up? Okay, well, he's going to do a shakedown of his new new haven just to make sure all of his security things are still working. Doesn't they seem to be. Seem to be uh, tampered with or anything. And then he's going to sit down and, and spend a little time looking at the uh, recordings from the building. He, he brought the recorder the with DVR? him. The DVR? Okay. Yeah. Uh, you can roll intelligence technology. And that means I can see. Now I have to start adding two red dice. Dun, 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 dun. I got used, gotten used to not having two. Get hungry. You got yes. used to not having any for a while mm-hmm. there. Yes. Yeah. Choose nothing. Choose interesting. Four. It doesn't really get interesting till three. Mm-hmm. Four. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you're searching through that right now. We'll come back to you. Locke. Um, yeah. The gangrel is still where you left him. Uh, he's okay. got long, ratty brown hair. Uh, you don't <sighs> recognize him, but you're pretty sure that it's not one you've seen in DC. Uh huh. He looks more like one of the ones you've. I mean, 20 years ago, you would have seen a couple of that type in the, the various homeless camps outside D.C. Um, okay. Uh, judging by the fact that if he's independent outside and anything like the rest of the homeless, he's probably an earth melter. Glad I put him on the second story. He had weapon up. But... Yeah. Okay. All right. And he's still got a, a hair stick jutting out right where his, his chest, where his heart is. <laughs> Yeah, I'm waiting. She is waiting for Tabitha to show up. Okay. And it's, how how far back are you going on the DVR? It's got like, you know, two weeks worth of... I'll, I'll start from the beginning of what um, what they have recorded and, and just watch to see who, who comes and goes. Okay, and just run it fast forward looking for people. You do see the gangrel uh, come and go a couple times. You see Buzzsaw come and go a couple times. But it's mainly... Uh, from when they started recording, you never see the prisoners come in. You see food come every once in a while, or what you suspect is food. It's a delivery truck where they offload a bunch of things. Okay. Uh, so it most likely it's it's food equipment to make food and, and feed the people in there. Uh, but generally, it seems like the guards were living in the building, doing random patrols. Buzzsaw came a few times, and just that gangrel. Okay, so so they the hostages they they had had been in there for more than a couple of weeks, you know. Yeah. Been recorded, which actually matches a lot closer to what Bria had said about you know uh, that her her brother had stopped right before the riots and stuff. It seems to be matching when Buzzsaw was starting to make his move. Okay, right about the time that Glenn was staked initially mm-hmm. and pulled off the field. The timing on that is odd, though, when you think about that, because how did they know that Buzz, that Glenn was taken off the field with a stake? Because this is all the info that Bria had had relayed. It's starting to trigger you now that you're not in the middle of, you know, trying to storm the place, is that if Buzz saw it started making his move before the riot, that would be when Glenn was staked. But how did he know Glenn was staked? Because that happened at the coronation at the coronation. And he was 1st. not there. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's true. Some info fed. Mm-hmm. Yep. So L- Lily's just going to hang out for a bit, or is she um, waiting for Dylan, or was she going to assist? Was Locke wanting you to assist? Locke didn't ask she... for assistance. So not yet. 
No, right. she may she may need assistance later, and that's fine. She'd be happy to assist. But um, the uh, she's checking her phone to see if there's any messages. Okay. Which ones are you looking for? I know you've got some about your your club being ready to open. Okay, your new place I've got being that. Ready to open. Anything from my friend? Not yet. Okay, I didn't know if he would respond yet or not. Well, it, so. he unfortunately doesn't stay up before do- or before dusk. So. Oh, I know, but it's been a little bit of time at this yeah. point because I met with Thomas. Right, but not for yet. A good thirty, forty-five minutes. Not yet. Um. Okay. Okay. Um. Question for the storyteller. Have we had the changes made to our phones yet by Karina? Nope, not yet. In two months' time? No, okay. she said she had to wait until they do the next uh, update of the software, okay. and then she can slip it in with the updates, but she can't just slip it in until they do the updates, because then she's doing an update to slip her shit in, and people find out. Okay. She's waiting for software revisions. <laughs> Damn, CRs. I know, mm. right? <laughs> um... You know, I could probably dump some money into this and make this happen so much faster. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, if you don't have anything yet, we can No, I'm, have I have something. Okay. I'm actually going to send a message. I'm not going to call, but I'm going to send a message to Karina that mm-hmm. we need to talk at her convenience. Okay. And I'll come back to you with a okay. reply here in a minute. Okay. Uh, we'll, cool, our, uh, Steve Perry's going to be looking at the video a while to get two weeks worth. So okay. we'll come back to him as well. Lock. 1030. Uh-huh comes All and right. you can hear tabitha coming up because she's on her on a motorcycle a harley pulling up yeah. out front um yeah there's, she goes down to, tonight there's no staff at the when you said close there's nobody there but you yep. she goes downstairs um and actually wait she's curious to see if tabitha has a key art did she does oh of course she does she lets her in herself in the back door we have a situation. Uh, when don't we have... S- Hi, Locke. Hi, how are you doing, Tabitha? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know... I'm not about to make your night better. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Can so, it get worse? Oh, absolutely. Would you like to make it worse? Well, I, I can I find like, many ways to make it I worse. I don't want to make it worse, but I mean, sure, we're, we can do this. Well, we're going for moderately inconvenient. Okay, like, well, what do we got? What all do right, we- so last night, um, we had to, we got some intel Okay. Um, on this dude named Buzzsaw. Okay, I've heard uh, that name, I don't know where I've heard, I've heard that name before. Interesting, interesting, I'd like you to think on that. Okay, yeah, I will, because I've heard that name. I don't know where. Yeah, God, he it sounds was, like a bad WWE name. It's like some wrestler oh, coming out. It, he was the worst. Um, was we did we did dust him right, storyteller, or did he get away? Buzzsaw, Buzzsaw's still yeah. doing his shit. Um, so anyway, Buzzsaw, he's still out there. Um, we did he does need to get taken care of. Um, but we got some intel. Basically, um, some people were being held prisoner. Um, in an abandoned, like, medical building. Um, we saved them. Go us. Mads, um, yeah. Kind? Kind, yeah. Um, and please correct me if I get any of this wrong, because there was, yes, just yesterday for her, it was two weeks ago for me. Right. <laughs> um, and because there was a lot of finding, my notes are sparse, so. And, and Locke has a lot on her mind, too, so, you know. Yeah, and Locke would, is probably not, it's, something's bugging her, obviously, but she's just trying to get through this next next part. She has to get through this. This is a time limit. Um, it's like, yeah. So one of the people, one of the, one of ours, uh, one of the kindred that was there, um, is a gang girl. We managed to take him down. Lily or Steve staked him. I don't know which. Um, and I asked them if they would let me get the first shot at seeing if we could maybe not kill him. Well, let's go see. I may know him. I mean, I know. Yeah, and that's. I've been here a long time, so I mean. I kind of want to give him the opportunity to maybe not side with fucking assholes. 
because I know our people tend to get talked into some really hairy shit because the job offers are not plentiful. Come on, we're all assholes. I mean, oh, well, we are. We're absolutely all assholes. But I'm loyal to a certain segment of assholes. Um, and yeah, let's go see them because maybe I know him. I mean, maybe. I... Um, so shakes her upstairs. And when she walks in a room, she looks at him. Zachary, you little shit. Oh, you do know him. Zach. Yes, he's one that runs outside of town. Okay. So what do we do? He, he does odd jobs for people kind of a thing, you know? Here's the thing. What was he involved in? He was taken kind prisoner? Yeah, he was working with this buzzsaw asshole. Um, Buzzsaw was trying to get his own turf um, inside of, you know, the prince's domain, which isn't, you know, that's not... It doesn't work that way. It doesn't. It doesn't. Someone was wildly misinformed. Um, So he was trying to get his own turf. Um, He also has a lot of dealings with the thin bloods and i've been trying to undermine that yeah, that's that's one of your things yeah i remember you yeah. told me about that um and you know i really don't want first i don't want zach to be dust if he's not if he's an idiot i can accept idiots you know i can deal with idiots uh, idiot maybe not idiot he's i like ivan but less discriminating about what jobs he takes. So, okay, I mean, you know what? I can understand that. But here's the thing. Um, I don't want him to be dust. Because I know what it's like to get caught up in shit that you absolutely did not mean to get caught up in. Um, But I need to be able to keep an eye on him right now. And make sure that he doesn't fuck around right now it's a very bad time to do that and I don't think Gangrel in DC have I mean are in a good position I mean one, we've still got a Gangrel for Sheriff so you know you know let's put some air quotes around that um, okay right wait now. wait 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 back up Lock. <laughs> now you've confused me well I mean is he getting fired no but you have said yourself, he doesn't act like himself. And he doesn't act like a fucking gang girl either. I mean, we're all weird some way. I mean, he broke Lily's door and offered to pay Hang for on a second, it. let me roll some dice here. <laughs> uh, why do I get the feeling there's something you're not telling me about this? Uh, there's a lot. I okay. I mean, sometimes I know things, and it's safer for people to not know the things that I know. Probably would be safer for me not to know the things I know. But somehow I keep knowing shit. But it, it I mean, deals with. But it's art. I mean, but then again, art threatened to kill me. So yeah, it's art. But right now, it's you know, there's just there is weird shit going on with him. I would not. Okay, let me put it this way. This is a way I think that we can both agree on. I don't think his loyalty is to anything but the tower right now. Yeah, he wouldn't like the idea of of Zachary then. So we need to maybe have a way that Zachary would stay in line and stay, you know... Not fucking around while things are very unstable in D.C. And I don't know which way we could do, I mean... You know a way I could do it. You're suggesting the same thing Vitel used on me, aren't you? Yeah. And I'm willing to be the asshole here. Because I'm I don't care if he likes me a year from now. It could work. Hard part's getting him to agree to it. Yeah. You know him. I do. I, you kind probably of, I mean, still I know have him. clout. I know him well enough. I mean, you know. Yeah. I don't know about clout. I don't want to, I don't want to, okay, I could very easily 
force him to do this. I could have Lily over here in 15 minutes. She'd zap his fucking brain and do the Toreador stuff. Oh God, and he'd never forgive. Oh my God, he'd never and forgive would, any one of y'all. I would not do that. Yeah, to he him. would never forgive any one of y'all for that. No. That would. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't want to force this, but you can see I have limited options. Yeah. Okay. I see where you're going. I can, uh, yeah. Okay. And you, at least, you can at least speak for me that I would. I would be true to my word. I would release him after all this bullshit's done. Well, the question is, would he believe us? I mean, does he have a lot of choices? He just um, there's has also to, that. I, he has to believe that he does have a limited number of choices. Because part of the whole reason he's not in the city is because of negative experiences in D.C. Yeah. You know, it, I mean, we can try. We can just wake okay. him up. Um, how how strong is he? Because I didn't actually get to go with him. Um, I was he's busy. pretty strong. I'm kind of shocked that I mean he's staked like this. Like, I mean I don't even see any other wounds on him. It's just like he just staked and nothing else. It's kind of no idea. <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't a hair stick, I'd swear he got hit with a crossbow bolt. But that's that's a damn hair stick, <laughs> and I recognize the hair stick. Oh yeah, yeah, they're great. <laughs> <laughs> Super convenient. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he's pretty strong. Those, those handcuffs oh, won't I hold him long. I figured. Um, so any suggestions? I mean, when we pull it out, it's not like he's going to. Well, he could instantly frenzy. Yeah. I have an idea. Um, she starts rummaging around and she pulls out her switchblade. She's like, I have an idea. I could be stronger. And she goes and she takes off her sweatshirt and goes to like start cutting herself. Wow. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How many superficial wounds do you in inflict on yourself? Oh, shit. Um, you know what? What's her max now? Um, how strong can she get? She can get. It's uh, uh, six plus your blood surge. One, two, three, four, Let me five. see my glasses here because I got my blood surge chart right here. Um, and I have blood potency. Your blood potency is two. Mm -hmm. It still only adds one di blood surge. You need to hit three before you get a second die of blood surge. So you cap yep. is seven. Okay. Yep, that's how many dots I have. And yeah, she'll do three superficial to herself. Okay. To bump and... your strength up to seven. Boop, boop, I mean, it's, it's valid. <laughs> Trigger warning. Oh, yeah, trigger warning, self-harm. <laughs> self-harm, trigger I, I, warning. I will not describe in detail what she does. Thank you. And Thank you. Rouse, but it rouse. works. It actually, yeah. that's actually a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. Did you get hungrier? Uh, she got hungrier. That puts you at what hunger? One. One? Because oh. she ate a dude. She ate a dude. Yeah. <laughs> the beast is... We could have just cut him. <sighs> would have been fun we could have just murdered him a little bit and then you know just left the body I don't think Locke likes the voice that the, the beast has started to take here lately mm. no <laughs> no <laughs> no no <laughs> so who's gonna get the honors of pulling the stake um mom can do it and Locke's just at the door Okay. Um, I'm assuming storage area, no other windows. The only no, it's, it's a storage area. It's a storage area is leaning against the door. Any storage area in DC with windows is a storage area that gets robbed. <laughs> it's not a storage area. <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's, it's a takeout. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Carry out for sure. Um, so <sighs> Tabitha goes over and she pulls the stake out. And now we're going to flash to Lily. Okay. You're, you're at the club. It's a little bit later now. Mm -hmm. Um, Thomas comes over the headset. Ma'am. Yes. Um, Karina's here. Oh, perfect. Bring her up to the conference room. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And doesn't take long before she's escorted up. She doesn't have her note or her clipboard tonight. Oh, of course not. She's unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> there is that. And but she's still wearing a nice smart Of course she is. You know, skirt suit. Karina, darling, thank you so much for coming over so quickly. 
it's not like I have anything else to do tonight. Uh, some of my other plans, you know, I've rearranged my schedules a bit, so I, I had some free time. What, I wish I what had that got? luxury. What, what's up, Lily? You kind of um, uh, shocked me by this one. You know what's happening, yes. I mean, I know that Anton's plan kind of got uh, sidetracked because uh, I'm not Sinshaw anymore. So we're not going to be beckoning him, but <laughs> what does that change to? I haven't talked to Anton today. Oh, interesting. So I get to be the bearer of the news. Okay, good news or bad news? Let's play the good news, bad news It game. could be either way, depending on your perspective, darling. Um, bad news. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> but it could be good. <laughs> what do you um, got? Anton came by the club last night just before. I had passed the message that mm -hmm. Quartermain wanted to meet with him. Yep. I and suppose that's what they it was. had the meeting and we were all present, the coterie. And um, Anton now has what he needs to declare Stanford and his line destroyed. Okay. There's only one thing I can think of that. Yes, he received information on what exactly caused the riots. Okay, remember I figured this this whole thing out before, and as far as I'm aware, um, you're not dust. No, I'm not. Is the rest of your coterie dust? No. Okay. Quartermain has been exiled. Okay. So, uh, mm, there's a story there I'm probably going to need to hear I, I, mm. at some point. At some point. But okay, I'm sure so, Anton will be happy to tell you. Oh, maybe. We'll see. He doesn't always share well if he doesn't share let me know i'll be happy to but i would like to give him the opportunity to share as a as a formal report i guess that does change i mean they didn't have enough to go and move but if if that's what's been done uh, the tower is going to make a move on stanford directly Mm-hmm. i'm gonna have to be ready to clean up a damn mess again i know this because he's have you realized it's your time yet You have been running. Well, we being a little blunt bitch tonight. Well, I tend to when I need to get down to business. I don't know. You've been running this city for a long time. I have. And it works very well for me to be right where I am and have been. Are you satisfied with that? For now, I'm young. <sighs> I would be a very, very young prince. Young enough that I would be a bigger target than I ever wanted to be. You've got to realize I've only been Kindred 30 years. That is not Prince timing. That is the problem. Sure, I'll be Prince one day. But any but Prince years, they put on isn't going to run the city you will. And that's the way I like things. If that's the way you must have it, then fine. But I'm do you young. know? You know at this age, uh, you, Darling, you know how this works. At my age, every kindred of any importance in this city would support your praxis. Yeah, it's not the city you worry about. I understand that. Could you imagine what uh, emissaries from Chicago would say? Oh well, don't Can they have? Imagine? Don't they have a young one on their throne now? Not that young. You know what they'd say <laughs> coming from New York? Oh well, those people. And, you know, so that, that's <sighs> this thing. It, I, I like where I am for now, but the problem is if they're going to try to, like, go after Stanford, I think I heard, what is this saying I heard used once? Some guy from down in Louisiana said it. He's dug in like a tick on a hound dog. Mm -hmm. I think that was the saying. <laughs> He's in that building of his in that basement, mm -hmm. dug in. Mm -hmm. So there's there's going to be some visible damage to to dig him out. Oh, I'm sure there will be, and I'm sure it'll be spectacular. Yeah. So I'm going to be busy with that one, but I mean, sure, I'd like to be a part. Of one course day. you would. But and you should be. You would be outstanding. For now, I, I'm gonna. Try to, to keep my hold in D.C. while I can, because I'm getting the distinct feeling this city's going to shit. Well, sometimes we have to go through some pains to grow, yes? Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's funny talking about all that kind of stuff, because 
I've been hearing rumors that a certain individual has been sighted around town again. Who? Oh, Vitel, of course. Oh. Oh, come on. I don't on. know what like he's you, doing, but... Seriously, you don't think that he doesn't <laughs> still have some hold on the city? I mean, come on. I tried to root out his people, but <sighs> I mean... He was so thoroughly entrenched. I'm just hoping he's not dumb enough to make another play. I would hope that the old dog has learned new tricks. He's an old dog and he's got a lot of tricks. And I hope that he has learned from his mistakes. Yeah, most of my people I know that I've talked to in the tower won't tolerate him coming yeah. back. So that's I would the assume so. Then again, I thought nobody would have tolerated Stanford around after the shit he pulled before, but look at where we're at. Yeah, well, you know what? That was only temporary, darling. It wasn't meant to be. Oh, yes, it was. He's just an idiot. <laughs> the moment Nathan got eliminated, Stanford was meant to be temporary. I miss that ornery bastard sometimes. He was a fun opponent. Hmm. He was a challenge. So, well, it's a shame I can't convince you to assert yourself because I would follow you. No problem. But. You know, with everything. You have to time your moves. I know. I know. It's not the time. If you say so, darling. Well, I'm sure the tower will send whomever they see fit. And I'm sure they'll sit a council that they see fit. Yeah, I have a feeling that this time, whoever declares praxis is bringing their entire court. Oh, I'm sure. And it really won't matter because... Anyone they set in Toreador is going to have to go through me. We'll see. It depends on, I mean, <laughs> maybe Victoria Ash. Oh, well, she's busy. Yeah, no, let's not bring the Banu Hakim bride oh, to our city. I just like taking digs at Toreador with that one. It, I find that amusing. <laughs> Though, I'm sure she's quite tied up. The Vermilion I heard was amazing. Oh, I'm but, sure it was. I was a bit busy. I was, of course, not invited because, yeah. Well, I was a bit busy, but, you know, family squabbles and all. So, mm. my quarter main is gone. Mm-hmm. Stanford is a target. So is all his childer and descendants. Has anyone warned George? He's a nice enough guy. Hmm. You can if you want to. After the stunt Stanford has pulled, Clan Toreador is fully in support of eliminating Clan Nosferatu from the city. I mean, I don't blame you, but I have to think on it. I don't know if I want to put my neck on the line for, for him. Yeah. He's a nice enough chap, and, you know, he's handy with his... His rat patrol, but but you know uh, the rat patrol. If we miss, a, if we're a man down on that, lock and talk to rats now. So we might have a replacement for yeah, him. If we need one. There's more to the rat patrol than just talking to a rat. I mean, <laughs> I mean, if it could, if, if it could just be talking to rats, we'd have you know, we might have more gangrels in the city. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's a little more than that, but but you know, yeah, just something to chew on. Okay, well, that's all. I just wanted to know your feelings on certain matters. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, I see what you're doing there, but it's just not my time yet. It's a shame. Well, that's what I've been told by a few people, but... It's a shame. Hey, maybe we can put Felix on the throne. Oh, God, I will never support him. Okay, you know, Quartermain told me what he did. I just, that was just me. Being a little bit catty, I'm, I'm overstressed after getting fired. I'm sorry about that. I'll apologize. Um, we're going to have to do something about him at some His point. His associations are questionable. Yeah, I know, because Quartermain told me before his exile, but uh, that's... We're gonna have to I do don't something care about what him. he did, but I, I know his associations are very questionable. No, uh, that, that was... Uh, Quartermain thinks he was linked to the... Uh, that gang girl sheriff that mm -hmm. 
you guys believed was linked to the Second Inquisition, so mm-hmm. um, the, the joke was in poor taste. Like I said, I'm, I'm just a little bit stressed here. That's fine. Because I'm surprised I was fired and not fire bombed. Indeed. I almost asked the Herald when he announced that the council was dissolved. Okay, are we scheduling the fire bombings yet? But I did keep my tongue. That would have been amusing. <laughs> it would have been short. It would have been short. But sweet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was so tempted. <laughs> it would have been short and sweet, though. It would have been great, but... Because <laughs> sometimes my mouth does get me in trouble. But... Yeah, well, it gets us all... <laughs> it's funny the things we say sometimes, mm-hmm. you know? But... <laughs> but I did have the sense about me to keep my mouth shut in that case. Yeah. I believe it. Mm-hmm. But thank you. That, that, that's actually good to know. I, I have to arrange a meeting with Anton because maybe I can try to make sure that um, whatever the plan is, is one that I can easily shape and cover for the media story. Uh-huh. And what is the best way I can reach Anton if I need to get in touch with him? Through me. Okay. Um, if he hasn't given you his number, I am not going to give you. Well, he he did give me a number some time ago, but I don't know if it's still valid. So, um, you could always try it. I but. could, but you know that's fine. Um, okay, because I may not need to anyway. But I have some things cooking that um, he might need to be made aware of. So, I mean, you didn't. He's not aware after Quartermain last night. I mean, no, because I'm pending some information. Because I think I can nail the prince for the firebombing on the Herald. I mean, it's good, but with what Quartermain gave up. I know, it's more, but I'd just like to add fuel to the fire, darling. I'd like Trust to- the Torador to always put a stick and stir the pot a bit, huh? <laughs> <sighs> some things never change. Oh, of course. Well, I'm off to, to go do some other things. Okay, I don't well, much, enjoy your like night. Said, I've got mostly a night off, but there's some other people wanting to meet with me. The Pontifex wanted to see me. Oh, and how is he doing? Haven't seen him in a while. I mean, he's a little bit upset that he was no longer needed for services. Oh, I'm sure that insulted uh, his pride. The Stanford didn't fierce. fire him per se because, well, you know, you don't just tell a Tremere they're fired. That doesn't go well. <laughs> Um, but his services as warlock were no longer needed. So, yeah, he's a little upset, but I need to go meet with him. And then Art wanted me to meet with him. Do tell, do tell Velois I send my regards. I, I'll tell him. It's just people want me to meet. And I figured since I don't have a job anymore, I could just go. And all these people who wanted me to meet, I'll just go hop around and see them all tonight. And we should do another girls' lunches. night. We had fun. What's that, Locke? She's a lady who lunches. Yes. Yeah. And we should do another girls' night. Those That was fun. Oh, it's a matter of time. Well, I mean, I got, like I said, more time now, but I have a feeling things are going to get ugly here in the city, and mm-hmm. uh, the amount of available time is going to shrink a bit. Just keep it in mind. I will. I mm-hmm. will. Well, have a good night, Lily. You too. And she leaves. I know the, the floors are generally carpeted up there, so you don't get to hear the click clack. Click clack, no. Of her sandals as she lays. Because you would also hear it every time Lily walks down the hallway. <laughs> and you can't be sneaky at all on hard floors up there with, with click clack. Hmm. So what are you doing, Steve, after all your, your video oh. searching? Because, I mean, it takes you out. You're running it at like, you know, a time and a half. You're not going to get done. And actually, you're running it real fast, just looking for. Well, anything, anytime anything sort of interesting starts moving, I slow it down and, and look at more closely. And slow it down. I mean, it, they're motion activated, so there's large periods of time that have nothing. So right. it doesn't even fit. It cuts out time as it, since it's only recording the motion. So right. it's not as long as it could be. Uh, but but you know, if you spend the whole night, you can finish it. But do you want to spend the whole night? Um, I'm not going to. Not the whole night, no. Because, you know, while, while I'm watching the, the, the video, I'm thinking in the back of my head about what Lily had said about talking about Quartermain. And you know how how Quartermain had uh, not given me up as the one who killed the Thin Blood, you know. And then just thinking about Quartermain a lot, I think maybe I'd like to take a trip over to his his uh, haven just to see if you know if he's still there or if there's anything left <laughs> behind. Okay, so we'll come back to that one in a second. Lock when the stake comes out. Oh no! <laughs> at first. 
there's not much just you know a little movement here and then all of a sudden god damn what the tabitha hey zach who's that tabitha okay. that lock meet zach Zachary, you know, Zach, Zach, Z, whatever, Meatlock. So, Zachary. Wait a minute. Okay. I vaguely recall being in the, the shroud. Mm hmm. I mean, I was kind of aware of things, but not aware of the. <sighs> Let's just say I don't exactly remember how I got here. I know, I remember. Do you remember? Um, trying to sneak up and attack a Toreador. Well, there was two people trespassing it, and I saw her drink one of the guards, so I figured it was a Toreador. Should have mm -hmm. known. Um, but I was trying to sneak up on him to, to you know, I was going to put a hurt on him. I wasn't going to kill him. I was just going to put a hurt on him and run him off, because every once in a while we get poachers that come up and start well, shitting. you see how this ended. Well, yeah, I guess. So we've got a problem now. Because the people you is, went to put a hurt on? Tabitha, is, is she okay? I mean, Tabitha's like, Locke's fine. She, trust me, she has your interest at heart. Yeah. They are my coterie members. I mean, why are we all on our turf? Well, it's not why really my we, turf. I just, you know. Whose turf is it? Well, Buzzsaw runs that. Yeah, why well, you paid me? Buzzsaw. Okay, he paid you. Paid me. Um. So here's the problem. Buzzsaw has declared he's got his own little turf right in the middle of Cami territory. Oh, he was always well. He's an idiot, but he pays well. Okay, so who's the bigger idiot? The idiot who does the stupid thing, or the idiot who sees it's a stupid thing and then wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm in DC right now. Mm hmm. See, Tabitha, why am I in D.C.? Tabitha's like, hey, talk to her. That's not me. You need to because deal with her. You, you were close enough to his turf. And it's a problem. I, I don't like D.C. I don't come into D.C. That, that yeah. What Buzzsaw wants to do in D.C. is his problem in Cami territory and all. I just stay out and then I don't have to worry about it. That's that's how I've operated. Do you feel worried at the moment? Um, if I'm in DC, yeah. Look, you should was, feel more worried. There was a little bit of incident with blood liquor one night. Mm -hmm. And I've kind of avoided DC. And you hear a little bit of a laugh from Tabitha when he says that. So look, I'm going to be real with you. You kind of have limited options right now. Because I don't believe that if I just let you walk out of here, that you're not going to go running back to Buzzsaw for a new paycheck. Or for any of the other people who are currently trying to burn this city down. Because there's going to be a lot of people coming into town looking for expendable people. And that's why I don't come to D.C. Like you to be suckered into this bullshit. Well, that's not the only... And there's other reasons. And you hear Tabitha go, Blood Liquor's his ex. You were fucking Blood Liquor? <laughs> they, they can do that? And Locke looks at <laughs> Dude! Um, I'm not going to... I mean, there was a little bit maybe of that, but I mean, it, that really was... We're I mean, we were a thing. To, okay. We were, were a thing. We were not on them. It goes back. We, I didn't gnaw on them. We were just a thing for a while. You know, she liked bikes. I liked bikes. She liked wolves. I like wolves. Yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> so look, look, that's. <laughs> and then you Tabitha, not... Tabitha goes, you cheated on her. Okay. Maybe it, it ended badly. That's why I don't come in the city because. I am sure that Tabitha and I can have a word with your ex about how we can deliver her the news. We can deliver her one of two things. Um, either you're a pile of dust or you are being managed. 
what news would you like for us to deliver to her? I, I mean, I'm, maybe she might. I know what she might want to say on that one. Um, but I mean, I don't like being dust. No, no, it's really not pleasant. Um, Cause have you ever seen a pissed off lupine? Yes. Yes, actually I have. It's unpleasant. Several times. Um, which is why, wow, you're not making a case for your intelligence. You fucking cheated on a lupine. Like <laughs> I barely like, I actually say please when I'm around lupines. Okay, I'd been I'd fed off somebody who was, you know, quite a bit drunk, and then it got me a little bit drunk, and then I mean it's not really Fire. cheating. I didn't bang them, but you know, okay, I might have been making out just a little, trying at least. You, you can't know. make out a little. Like that is a that is a, that is a you know that's what she, wait a minute, that's exactly what she said. <laughs> <laughs> And Tabitha you know, is grinning at this point. I mean, just a wide <laughs> smile. Dude, dude, okay, obviously, okay. Jesus, hell, fuck. Okay, uh, this is fine. Um, look, look, I know what it's like to get caught up in bullshit. But right now, I have two choices. Either can, I can assure interested parties that you're dust, or... Well, until this city calms down. And now she struggles. She's like, how the fuck do I phrase this? I need to make sure you'll do it all. So what I say. Uh, I can give you my word. No, nah, man. Not good enough. <laughs> And Tabitha goes, I, she's talking about the bond. I don't like it, but it's the one thing that people would believe. I mean, if I said, he's not a problem, I've taken care of it. There's only two ways that you are taken care of. I mean, that, that sounds like you're trying to get hitched. No, it's not, dude. It's not like, no. So it's it's a business. It's a business arrangement. It's, it's clan shit, okay? I'm trying to keep... There's not fucking many of us in town. I mean, you're not making it sound like I got a choice. You really don't. There's so, there's two so options. You, you've thrown down bonding or turn me over to blood liquor, essentially. I mean, I probably wouldn't be that mean. I'd probably just dust you first. <laughs> Do you think you can, I mean, she said, if I ever see you again, I'll kill you. So do you really think we can? I mean, okay, I know a lot. And Tabitha speaks up and goes, she's mostly over it. I mean, this was a good seven, eight years ago. Yeah, dude, she's, you weren't that, your fangs weren't that good. Trust me. Like, she's probably done. Tabitha's just kind of nodding your head. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I, uh, um... And as soon as shit calms down, then if we can, it's then let it wear the fuck off. Or I don't know. I think there's some other shit. Trimmer probably can do some bullshit. They can do all kinds of weird shit. Um. All right. I'll let her bond me. And Locke he, points at, at, he points at Tabitha. Okay. Locke looks at Tabitha. I'd prefer to be the asshole in this situation for a lot of reasons that I think it'll keep everyone safer. But if you, what do you think? Tabitha goes, if I bond him, uh, it's going to cause tension with blood liquor. Remember, I live yeah. with her. Yeah, and yeah, I think that, you know, dude, there's there's a lot going on here. And his eyes go, wait a minute, you're living with blood liquor now, Tabitha? Really? They're not a thing. Yeah, but <laughs> really? Tabitha's like, well, you know, Art and me are on the outs. 
art on the outs. I didn't think that was art's capable of out. Yeah. That's that's why there's Gangro are having a moment, a bad moment in the city at the moment. Fine. I'll I'll let you bond me. Okay, okay, fine. And she's already got like an open wound on her arm. You just well some blood up to it? Yeah. Make your rouse check. Uh, Actually, you don't have to for a bond. You don't have to rouse. Mm-mm. Okay. Nope. That's right. It doesn't that's have fun. to be a full rouse. Right. That's only if you're ghouling. He keeps doing it to me, though. But- no, I stopped doing that for the, the blood bond. <laughs> no, you uh, didn't. That's right. I didn't. But a uh, ghouling is where you have to give him a full rouse check's worth. So mm. you don't, can't ghoul a vampire. It doesn't work that way. So he, he takes a sip. Oh. And it's kind of weird. Yep. Actually, it's really weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's yeah. one step. Do you let him out of his handcuffs yet, or are you going to leave him there? You can hear Lily's voice in your head. Don't unrestrain him until he's uh, fully bound. Yeah, that's that's she. We need to get to at least. We need to get to six. At least, you know. The oh, six. You're going to keep me least. handcuffed here the whole time. Can you at least bring a TV in or something? It and put a remote in my. This is really boring. Staring at. It. A room. I yeah. know I just got a, I got a hole in my chest. What am I going to do when I get hungry? Um, I, hey, can you like, you know, bag it? Because I got a source. No. Who? <laughs> uh, well, okay, what do you like? Uh, people? Okay, I got a bar, man. Like, I can get you people. I mean, normally the homeless, but, you know, I've hit a biker or two. Because technically when you think about a uh, uh, a lot of bikers are homeless because they're living off their bike. So, you know. You know what, buddy? I have a bar. Um, I'll bring you up someone nice and sloshed. Later. Okay, How hungry th- are you? I mean, I'm not hungry yet, but I'm pretty sure Tomorrow. when I go to close this hole in my chest. Yeah. But I mean, no, at least it's a it. small hole. It, it, well, I mean, yeah. It, she holds up the stick. And, uh, and his eyes get all big. I was staked with a hair stick. <laughs> you were. <laughs> and a pretty one, too. Tabitha, if you tell anyone about this. <laughs> and Tabitha goes, nope, your hair sticks now. That's your new nickname, hair stick. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, it could have been from Claire's Boutique, man. It could have been a lot worse. I, still, I'm going to get whoever did. Mm. No, you're not. Coterie, remember? Mm-mm. I didn't say I'm going to kill him, but I'm going to get him. No, I wouldn't recommend it. She's a Toreador, and they know nothing but they revenge. Make, they're the best ones to do practical. You've never done practical jokes on Toreadors? You don't. I'm in a coterie with one man. Don't. Oh, no, I've done it a few times. It's really fun. No, no you don't know, Lily. It's really fun. Back it's before not, I left the city, oh, we need I to actually get put soap. Real fast. I once put soap in Chaz's flute before I left the city. Okay, that's funny. And he went to blow it, and he was blowing in it, and then bubbles started coming out, and it was amazing. Okay, okay, if you tell her that, she will probably find that amusing. But no, <laughs> Lily's off limits. What about the other one, the creepy looking dude? Uh, Steve? Is I would that his name? He, yeah. He looks like a Steve. <laughs> Steve Dahmer. I mean, I was watching him. Oh, well, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Um, no, they're both off limits. They're my Coterie members. I mean, haven't you been in a Coterie before? Not really. You know, I've hung out, but... It's weird. You're, like, loyal even when they are horrible. Like, that's kind of... That's the benefit. And they're kind of loyal to you even when you're, like, a fucking idiot. It's It works. It, it's its own system. And Tabitha goes, he is a fucking idiot sometimes. <laughs> So, so you leave him uh, handcuffed up. We're gonna end the scene. We get him a TV, a TV, something to watch, something to watch. Because it would be boring to spend three nights in a row in a room. Six nights in a row. No, because it's uh, you can do a, oh, if doing six. Yes, yeah, six nights in a row <laughs> in a room with nothing. He doesn't seem like the reading type. Um, I text Jack. Okay. And I'm like. We have a guest upstairs in the storage room. Is he a friendly guest? Um, will be soon. Don't just leave him to his TV 
and call me if there's problems. Got you, boss. And we're going to take a break right here in okay. this right here before Steve, because Steve's coming back to see Lily now. And Locke has dealt with a bit of an idiot. No, Steve was going to Quartermain's Haven. Oh, oh Steve yeah. was going to Quartermain's Haven first. Yeah, he's going to go loot the Haven. Mm -hmm. And uh, Locke is dealing with a little bit of an idiot playboy, wannabe playboy gangrel. <laughs> Legit. I have and, known uh, guys like that. And we will be years. back in 10 minutes. Uh, <laughs> enjoy the break. <laughs>
my soul cut through your skin and burrow within and burrow within splinters of my soul cut through your skin and burrow Terrify you? Or do you feel alive? Allow me to introduce. Myself, though I fear you've heard my name, and that you've heard the story, heard the story. of Countess Bathory. History is told by the victors, heroic warriors, and mad kings. Will you hear my story, hear my story. from the lips of Bathory?
Welcome back. Before the break, uh, Locke had had her little thing with uh, <laughs> Zachary. Um, found out that Zachary and Blood Liquor were a thing. But like all kindred relationships, the beast makes you do bad things. And in his case, he cheated on a lupine. <laughs> Which is a really bad, bad thing. Bad idea. <laughs> yeah. That's so bad. And Steve was heading over to uh, Quartermain's Old Haven. And of course, Lily had had a meeting with Karina, where now you understand why Karina hasn't tried she's to take afraid. the um, okay. Her age. Oh, she's it, afraid. She's afraid for her age. Um, and so basically, Lily sees that was unproductive and a waste of her time, and so she goes to her quarters and writes. Writes for now? Mm-hmm. Okay. So yep, She hasn't had a chance to really do that We're going to go straight much. to Steve. Oh, and your, your, your other bar is ready. You could also go and check it out some point later on. Um, I don't know who you plan to have, whether you're going to do a soft opening. Or I am going to do a soft open. Okay. Now that it's ready, I will do a soft open sometime over the next week or two. Okay. I was curious about that one. Mm-hmm. So, Steve, you, of course, know the way to Quartermain's Haven, but the only way you know to get there is first come to the Succubus Club and go in through the sewers under the Succubus Club, because that's the only way you've been to his haven was using that that navigation path. Thought we'd been through the CNO Canal. Um, you're going to go into the CNO Canal to get to his haven? That is the long, long way. Okay. All right. No. Then I'll go through the club, and I'll, I'll talk to Lily and Locke if they're there. Well, Locke's not there yet, but... Yeah. Lily's in her quarters. And Lily's in her quarters, so you can just cut right through and, and head off to quarter mains. Okay. All right. Then I'll uh, do that. And it don't take you long to get to it. Now, when you arrive to his old haven, it's still there. It hasn't magically disappeared or anything, uh, but the large security door is closed. And to my knowledge, Quartermain never gave you the the code to get through the door. No, he didn't. He, didn't, he never explicitly gave it to me. Right. But, you know, I tried the door anyway. It's locked. The, it's engaged and the, the actual lock is on. He locked it before he left. Now, that doesn't mean you can't eventually get through the security on it, because if there's an exposed keypad... Okay. Well, I did help him put in a lot of stuff. Yeah. There, so, so oh, it, see what I can do. Okay, you can roll intelligence plus uh, technology. It's going to be a tough one, but, you know, you did help him put a lot of the stuff in, so you know a lot of the bits and pieces. Five. Five? You gonna roll willpower with that, or is it just gonna take the five? Um, I haven't used much willpower lately, so sure, I'll. Uh... I mean, five is enough for a. I get a hard thing. Okay, no. I got five, that was five with six die. So do I get three or? Nope, you would only get to re-roll. And was the failure you had your blood die? No, it was not. Oh, so you could only re-roll that one... I mean, you mm. could re-roll three of your black ones that were successes, hoping for a crit, but uh, you could also get no successes and lose right. successes, right. so... All right, I'll do just do the one. Okay. And I made it, so... Six of them. Yeah. <laughs> You're pretty sure you can get in. Uh, you don't have the tools you need with you, but okay. if you brought the right tools, you're pretty sure you could get through it. Okay. Well, I you need to bring most- some of your electronics equipment. Okay. Um, I should just still have most of that stuff in the club that I do yep. for sweeping for lilies. Yep. Okay. And so you head back to the club, and when you arrive at the club, you arrive right as you hear over your headset, uh, right as you get in the club. Uh, Ms. Lily, Locke, just arrived. Okay. Actually, let me go give Locke her conversation first. Mm-hmm. Though. It's real fast. Um, as they're leaving, Locke will look at Tabitha and say... Could you catch blood liquor up on this whole situation? Really? Um, um, Your friend. I, I was hoping you could. Me? I mean, I can. I okay, can I'll do it. But but you're her friend. Yeah, you I know. know but this is, you, there's some conversations that are a little awkward. Uh, Okay. Hey, hey, your ex is back in town and uh, Locke's blood bonded him. No, see, I, I mean, technically, technically, yes, you can phrase it differently. 
it, it's not a I'm not we're not dating you know it's not like that it's a political situation okay I'll I'll, I'll, I'll try that maybe okay should, we'll go with that okay it just you know okay um no maybe maybe I should I don't know I, I, um, no, I'll tell her um if she, she may come bug you about it later um bug with Claus no she just may want to speak with him okay with Claus no. No, I made a promise. I don't think she's serious about wanting to kill him. She might just hurt him a little bit. Never talk to me first, please. I told her she's going to talk to you about wanting to, to speak with him. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll find out. May I'll try to tell her that just let this. This is a temporary thing. And yeah, we'll, this is temporary. This is just. I'll try. But he's, uh, yeah, he's, he was a dick. Bit of a douche. Hey. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of get that now. They all are. Um, so okay, that's that's fine. I gotta, I gotta get to the club. I gotta catch Lily up. Okay. Um, well, um, I'll hang out here a bit until Jack is around. Okay. Uh, that way, there's at least somebody in the building in case he decides to to break his bonds and and run amok. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. Thank you. Um. All right, and I will talk to you later. Um. Stay safe. She, you too. And she heads out toward, goes to the club. In what her, vehicle do you, do you take in the hoopty? Hoopty. She's taking the hoopty. She's taking the hoopty. And so you arrive at the club and you get there right about the time Steve Perry's coming out of his basement oh. thing, coming out to go looking for his stuff, I think. is, is Okay, I'll move out to the office because I don't okay. want people bothering me in my quarters. No, because you never let people bother you in the quarters. That's no, only one person ever did, and Lily was a little bit pissed about that. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't have Vitel show up in your quarter yet. No, you the quarter main. Not day. yet. Quarter main. Day. <laughs> Not yet. You caught the yet, huh? Mm -hmm. yep. Yet. Yeah, that will be fun. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So Lily moves out to her office. Okay. Now, Steve, do you go and stop in and say now that you you know you hear locks here and you, you're all oh, yeah. as a group? Or? Yeah. And okay, and I put I announce okay. Well, I'm up in my office. Okay, and I'll let y'all mm -hmm. you know go up and say hi to Lily in her office. Lock goes up. She's like. Well, I didn't have to dust him. Good. So and he's, he's so he's Steve's in the room with you, just so you know. It's all three of y'all guys. Okay. And, Fine. And he took the bond. We're one sixth awkward, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> good. Good. Guess um, what? Okay. Do you want to laugh? Oh God! What? So, I was talking to him. He's kind of a douche, also an idiot. I don't think a bad guy. Um, apparently, he likes pranks. And he pulled a prank on Chaz at some point. He put he put um, bubble solution in his flute. Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet Chaz was beside himself. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I do wonder though, as the bubbles burst, did you hear the music? I don't know. I'll have to ask him. Okay. Um, <laughs> so. I, I doubt it would work that way, but it's just, it would be so comical. It'd be some Looney Tunes bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I mean, it would be, you know, I, I could see the crowd thinking it's some new performance art. I mean, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And guess, guess what? Hmm. Uh, apparently, he was dating Blood Liquor at some point. <laughs> she I didn't know that was likes a Kindred. Uh huh. Oh, very interesting. It, it was very awkward. The whole thing was just them trying to give me information I did not need in my brain. But I got it anyway, so now you have it too. Okay, that's fine. I, I, I will pocket that until further utility if I need it. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, um, so very good. Um, so just to warn you, a few weeks back I saw Wayland, and as you know, I, I had him fully bound to me. Uh -huh. um, when you... What's the guy's name? Um, well, his name is Zachary... But it is also now hair sticks. <laughs> so... Oh, I bet he's so 
livid that he got staked not, by a Toreador's hair stick. Not happy. He's not happy. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, okay, so um, just to let you know, um, as the bond gets stronger, and if it is maintained for any time, it may get more awkward for you. I know. Because I'll be real with you, Waylon professed some things to me that I didn't see coming and don't really trust because I think it's the bond influencing it. Yeah. Yeah. So Steve, make a willpower check. He may develop a sense of affection towards you. Your unspent willpower check, by the way. I know. I, 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 um, I told him once things chill out, Okay, that's just I'll, we'll, we'll, I'll release uh, him. It's your uh, your unspent willpower plus one die for okay. your one third of your humanity. Okay. No so, blood dice. So, yeah. So just be aware that that can happen, especially the longer the bond goes on. Three. Yeah. Three? Um, you were bonded once. So. Hmm. Yeah. Just I mean, it's one that. of the excuses that Gangrel have for dropping um, their you know, their children on their asses in the middle of the woods is that they want the bond to wear off, the even to not have it at all, which I still think is a bad plan, you know. But none of us are model parents, darling. No, no. <laughs> so, but yeah, I I fully yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna get fucked. Yep, you realize this talk of the bonding, you were bonded once to the to a redhead. Go oh, to a redhead, okay. Mm -hmm. and am I connecting that to uh, Esmeralda? Are you? Well, I, I, it's the only redhead that I really know. I mean, that I seem to have some sort of memories about. Yeah, that, that's that's on you whether you really that just would Steve connect it to her, considering oh. what you've been told. He'll probably piece it together fairly shortly. Okay. When he thinks about it. There you go. There's a memory that their talk of the bond has triggered a memory in you. Okay. So that's taken care of. Good. Good. Well, I spoke with Karina. She won't put herself up for praxis. She's afraid. She, say, she says she's too young. She'll eventually be prince, but not yet. And I'm like, please, you run this city no matter who's prince. I mean, come on. But she's afraid. So if we were going to worst case scenario this. A worst case scenario is... It's going to be a hell of a scene taking Stanford to up, basically rooting out Stanford from that damn basement that he's claimed as his throne mm -hmm. room. Um, I could get information to relay to people who are going after him, but I have to kill Vicky in order to accomplish that or get her killed. Good luck with that. Yeah, yeah. And, and I don't think I want to. Honestly, I don't need to know the secrets of that throne room. Somebody else can make that bargain. It's not going to be me. Um, so I may just happen to tell Vicky that Vital wants her dead. Might get some favor out of her. Um, <laughs> oh, that's the, oh, all those are those are horrible ideas both ways. <laughs> I don't like either of those directions. Can't we just leave the fucking Lissandra alone? No offense. No offense. It's so hard, Locke. <laughs> Why can't people leave? Just, just leave it be. <laughs> I'll try. I'll try. I, I, I'll I try. don't know how we take out uh, Vicky. I mean, they're okay. I, I'm pretty sure that if we really thought about them, come up with something, but... The, uh, it's one of those things that, boy, it would have to be a really good payday. Yeah. And information is not always a good No. I, I think he wants a bit much for that. Yeah. So, I, I, I'm not satisfied with that deal. And honestly, I don't need to know all the secrets of that phone room, especially if we're routing out Stanford and no one's going to use it again. <laughs> so, it's like a, you know, one-use thing. Yeah. Not worth it. And it um, might be make it easier to route them out. Right. Them again. We've and got, it might uh, and it might get me a lot of boons for trading that information, but yeah, but I'm not sure if it's worth it. So, um, yeah. So, um, Karina's afraid, and 
I get it. I get it. She's young. She told me today she's only been kindred for 30 years. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So she's young. One day she'll become a little more fearless. But, um, been true are sometimes a little slow for that. Uh-huh. But, um, yeah. So, and that's pretty much it. Okay. Oh, she did nice. tell me that Velois is very pissed off at the situation. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. <laughs> what was that, Lance? What did you say? In, in the pause, they were saying, well, guys, I'm, I'm going to go visit Quartermain's old haven. Anybody want to come along? You're going to what? Uh, n- no, I'll pass. Um, no, you you should pass, Steve. Why? Steve, you know what's in there. Okay, one, you know what's in there. Two, it's not Quartermain's Haven. It's Celios's. Hmm. What but there was wrong? books. Hmm? <sighs> Steve. Hmm? Steve, so many things can go wrong. So many things can go wrong. Name five. Name five. Okay, cool. Do you have a whiteboard in here? Um, Not in her office. Oh, no. <laughs> so, okay, let's let's start. Um, Zelios could take offense um, at you barging in there. I've been, um, I've been in there many times. Yeah, but now it's not. You've not with the permission of his caretaker, because that was their, That was the deal between the two of them. There was there was a deal, like, some bullshit. Um, That's right, Steve wasn't there when Quartermain talked to Zelios, but you were one mm-hmm. of the times. Yeah. Okay. Steve, um, are you looking for the book? Among other things, but mostly I just wanted to look I at... Mean, do you think he didn't take it? Right, I... Quartermain would not have left his, the book. He would have taken it with him. At the very least, for insurance. Yes. Because mm. while he is a Boy Scout, he's not totally an idiot. No. <laughs> um, oh, there's there's the labyrinth. There's a, oh, there, I'm not concerned about that. But sometimes... Let's not pay more visits to her, please. If we can help it. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's concerned with you. So we've got two, which I really think should count for more than two because they're pretty big. But um, he could have <laughs> trapped it. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Um, Knowing him, he took everything he considered his and left everything that he considered Zelios's. So if you take anything that is in there, you're going to be taking from a very old Nosferatu. Yep, what she said. <sighs> Fine. You're, you're all probably right. Fine. <laughs> and you're going to do it anyway, right? No, no. Okay, no. Wow. I will accede to your wisdom on this on this occasion. Is he lying? <laughs> oh, lie detection. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna be uh, wits insight. Wits insight, sure. Mm-hmm. With a bonus for lie detection. Yep, because you specialized in lie detection. Are you gonna try to? Steve can roll against her or not. It's up to Steve. I'm not gonna roll against her. Four, five, six, seven. It's kind of hard to roll against her when you know you don't even have enough dice. Right. Uh, are you great. lying? No, I'm not lying. I'm okay. Not, I'm not gonna no, go. he seems to be honest. Huh. Okay. That That is a wise choice, Steve. I wanted to see it again. I, I know, but I don't think you'll find anything that you're really looking for. Yeah. And Locke looks fun. Hmm. Are you okay, Locke? No. No, no. I know. You lost a friend. Mm. I know. Well, we all did. <laughs> he was. We would work together. Right. Too. Like, y'all, y'all were close. Asshole. Didn't and like wouldn't even say like let let us in. go. Dramatic. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. I'll be okay. We live a long time. Yep. I can we tell do. him he's an asshole to his face. One day. One day. If he makes it. He will. 
more worried about us at the moment, to be honest. <laughs> We're kind of in the warp, uh, weird situation. Well, depending on how things go down with Stanford and how the tower responds... Well, we'll see. Yeah, I may, I may, I may decide it's time to move on. Yeah, I'm curious to see who will, who they'd send down next. Yeah, because I am, because Karina and I are of one mind on this. They'll likely send their entire court with them. And I mean, I probably would stick around no matter what. Yeah, that's fine. I've got interests here, and I can't move those interests. I have a ticket to any Camarilla city I want to go to. Yeah. Because none of them will refuse a succubus club. No. <laughs> succubus club, Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> so. But yeah. But we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Yeah. I mean, the worst case scenario I could think of would be art. What about him? Declaring praxis. Hmm. I don't think it would happen, but then again, I'm kind of not working with the art that ex- I I don't fully understand the art that exists. You can't really now. anticipate him. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like even even with the shit I thought I understood. Yeah, you can't anticipate him. I can't and I can't predict him anymore. And everybody I knew who could is also now. Well, with the way him. things sound, it's what does Dorian want? Mm. <sighs> Oh, I don't like that question. Oh. Does he want stability or does he want the city to burn? Oh, no. I don't like that question at all. Shit. We could go and ask him. I mean, I have a couple questions for him myself. Oh, I'm sure you do. And I'm sure that will go so well for you, Steve. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, you know, I have not, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I was being sarcastic. Yeah. <laughs> Um, My sarcasm detector doesn't work. I mean, oh, okay. I can talk to Esmeralda. She's been teaching me to drink. Oh, She's really? actually become a regular yeah. at Purgatory. Yep. She's been teaching me to work? drink. Um, well, you spend slightly more time not throwing up <laughs> as time goes on. <laughs> so you basically will yourself to keep it down. Yes. I'm getting close. I mean, Good. you kind of alcohol or you just... It doesn't really do anything. Um, but then again, I was a functional alcoholic. <laughs> so it wasn't doing a whole lot when I was alive. <laughs> oh, goodness. Locke was a functional lot of things. Actually. A functional well, lot of things. at the end of, you know, towards the end, she at least got off the hard drugs and her friends were like, I guess this is as good as we're going to get is Locke the functional alcoholic. And that was where... I mean, it's valid. That's valid. Yeah. It's just good. It's like, okay, we can stop here. Take our wins while we can. Doing, oh. <laughs> just not doing Hey Ron or anything crazy. So Okay. We well, I'm sorry to ruin your evening plans, Steve, but that was really not a smart decision. It really wasn't. But, you know, talking to you guys, I mean, uh, mostly I was, you know, just think the thought of having missing Quartermain. Really. I get that. I get that, but you won't find him there or or anything that will really remind you of him there. That's true. Lily's phone vibrates. Uh Uh-oh. Okay. Boss says, come to the roof. Fucking shit. Okay, well, excuse me. I have a visitor on my roof. Uh, Do you want us to be near? It's Vital. Oh. Oh! Have fun. fun. I'll, I'll I'll go handle it. We I have cam- we have cameras up there. They're not going to see him very well, but they might see me. So yeah, let's uh, let's observe. You can you guys can observe. Okay. You only hear really her side of the yeah. You only hear my side of the even. conversation. Okay. That'd be the new thing, Steve. So I, I leave my phone. On, I leave my phone on my desk. Actually, yeah. I don't even bother because it's not going to work in his field. So <laughs> <laughs> you head up to your roof. I head up to my roof. And when you get up there, there's no pocket of shadow this time. Okay. There's Vitel leaning up against the side of the uh, the stairwell okay. door. Just leaning against the, the mm-hmm. side of it. I see you got my message. Well, good evening, <laughs> Lily Sanger. Good evening, Lord Vitel. I got the message and let's just say I'm intrigued 
Hmm. By, um... Things have changed quickly? Well, no, <laughs> by the, the fact that you think you can have him back. Oh. When you haven't delivered your side of the bargain yet. Well, fully. I do intend to deliver the bargain. I am a woman of my word. However, the political climate in the city has changed. Oh. Are you aware? Let's say I'm aware that they plan to move on him, and uh, he has dissolved his court. Hmm. I do not know who plans to move. I haven't figured out who's here in the city to, to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, But if history's any guide, there'll be some archons and some mm -hmm. just a cars appearing. And uh, indeed. Should prove to be quite a spectacular show to watch. Absolutely. I plan to have her inside seats. I could make it easy. Hmm, the price would probably be too high for me. No, the price wouldn't be yours to pay. Whose? Tell whoever comes. I'll tell them how to go in after. Make it easy. In return, all I want is this tower to stay away from Baltimore. Let me be. Arrange this. And you can have you will ruin me. back. Excuse me? You will ruin me. No, no. I think that they would be willing to pay this price. I can have other agents deliver the message. Mm. But I like to use the instrument of my own fall <laughs> to arrange safety of my city. I will not try to take DC from them. They can have their sin. They wanted it so bad, and it's done so well under Camarilla rule. Oh, this me. was only a stepping stone, Vital. But in return for me telling them exactly how to get him, no mess, no masquerade breach, no fuss. They will leave my city alone. They will leave me be to run Baltimore the way I see fit. And they know that for all my faults that they do not like me for, I do keep the traditions. Good. It will not be a problem with that. Arrange this and you can have Wayland back. We will consider ourselves done. All you must do. Agreed. See, that wasn't so bad. You'll get the throne room secrets an easier way. And I'll get what I want. Which is what to I wanted To be left alone before. to do your own bidding. Left alone to found a city independent of the games. Mm. And of the wars of the elders. What I tried to do here. Do give your citizens something to focus on. Oh, I will. When you leave them to their own devices, it falls apart. I will take a firmer hand this time <laughs> than I did the last. Good. I'm glad you've learned. I will do direct rulership. But then again, unlike this city, I'm not starting off with a reputation. True. What do they call you there? The Roman? Prefect. The Prefect. The Prefect. Okay. It's an old, old It term. is. I'm familiar with history. The adjudicator, the magister, is mm -hmm. the closest equivalent. Very good. He who oversees. Mm -hmm. I truly wish you well, Lord Vitale. I do hope you succeed. I wish you success in this endeavor. Thank you. I bid you good night. Really I will saying. advise you when it's done. Please let me know. Mm -hmm. And he opens up. You see him just step into the shadows of the sea, mm -hmm. of the roof and just I just walk down. You you barely catch a glimpse of him 
about four buildings over, stepping out of another shadow as he proceeds mm-hmm. to shadow step building to building away. Mm-hmm. Leaving you there. And for everyone downstairs, you heard her side of the conversation, but not his. His was just garbled junk. Caught bits and pieces, words here, word there. Mm. You know, alone. You heard the word alone for some reason. Mm. But just bits and pieces. But then the cameras, suddenly all the static clears and there's Lily standing alone on the roof. I guess he did the spooky hopscotch. <laughs> spooky hop, spooky hops, hopscotch. I like it. That's she goes up one. to. <laughs> goes up to where Lily is. And Lily doesn't appear to be coming down anytime soon. Does Steve go with her? Yes. Lily, you're joined on the roof by Steve and Locke. Well, I have a new way that I can get the secrets to root Stanford out without breaking the masquerade. Okay. What's the point? I have to basically talk to, I suppose, Anton. Let him know that Vital will give them the information they need to get in and out of that throne room to take him out. What is that? That makes you associated with Vitel. And in return, Vitel wants the Camarilla to leave Baltimore alone. That he will leave DC alone. He will not come back to try to claim it. I mean, it sounds like a pretty sweet deal. Because we don't need to leave this city anymore. I agree. Locke, there is probably no one in this city who wants things stable more than me. I damn near lost one of my own. So what's the problem? I worry what it will do to my reputation. Mm-hmm. Well, let somebody else take the... Let somebody else deliver the news. Does he, does it need to be you? Yes. Oh. Well, I mean, because I don't give a shit about my reputation. <laughs> <laughs> like, come. <laughs> shit all over it. It's fine. I'm a gang girl. We're, we're good for that. No, that would be too easy, darling. Oh, no. But then again, I mean, is it a bad reputation? You're... Associated you know, with powerful kindred? Yeah. And, Even I mean, if they're not um, Camarilla loyal? Some powerful dude came and offered you a cush deal... <laughs> and you are helping out the tower by delivering the news and they can just decide what to do with it what they want. They can do it the hard way, they can do it the easy way. And you're just the messenger on this one. Yeah. Like, it's all on how you play it. You don't have to play like, you know, you had, you've been like you know, like, having dinner and like you're in the same book club or some bullshit. <laughs> you know, you can just say he came and, and asked me to deliver a message. Oh, darling, I wouldn't be caught undead doing that. <laughs> What's wrong with a book club? Natalie likes book club. That's fine, but not with Vitel. <gasps> oh. I knew it meant something. I have to have standards, but, um, yes, well, um, okay. Thank you, Locke. That's. I'm a little too personally invested in this situation, and sometimes it's it's hard to see it objectively. Mm. No, I can get that. And I'll get Wayland back for doing it. Yeah. See, you get you get awkward get... situation. I in know here. that I need to rectify because once I get him back, I'm not making him drink anymore because I, I need to know what's real and what isn't because that's <laughs> freaking me out. <laughs> I understand completely. Huh? I understand completely about figuring out what's real and what isn't. <laughs> exactly. It's freaking me out. Well, so, yeah, I guess that's true. Okay. Well, um, I suppose let me send a text to Karina. I need to talk to Anton. Okay. Yay. So I go back downstairs where my phone is and pick up my phone. And, and it also shows that Vitel doesn't have perfect info of DC. 
because he doesn't know the situation mm-hmm. changed. He doesn't know Anton is here. He doesn't know who mm-hmm. is being sent. He just said when they send them because he knows somebody's going to come. Because mm-hmm. he's been on a receiving It's end. nice to know Vital doesn't have access to my conference room. <laughs> you weren't in your conference room. You were in your office. No, we were talking to Anton in the conference Oh, yeah, the Anton, room. but you guys just had your talk in your office, didn't you? Right. But. Yeah. To get access to it. Remember, the veil is not thin everywhere. Right. Mm-hmm. It's only where there's been death recently. Um, don't have talks in your uh, playroom. No. <laughs> there's yeah. been a few deaths there, and it, the veil's a little bit thinner. Yeah, no. No talks in the playroom. Don't have talks in purgatory. Yeah. Two yeah. of no. kind were murdered there. Yeah. But it started, I mean, it's been two months. It's repaired itself some, but. Okay. So. Hey, you get your phone. I get my phone, and I text Karina. <sighs> okay. I may have a solution. Need to talk to Anton. Might make your mess less messy. I'll relay the message. Don't know when he'll come over. That's fine. But you know he doesn't announce before he shows up. I know. I know. Thank you, darling. (laughs) So Anton will be by whenever it's convenient for him. I'm sure he has so much other stuff to do. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. So what you got going tonight? Other than awkward developing at your <laughs> at your bar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do some patrols. I'm still, I'm trying to keep, I'm trying to keep the thin bloods from poking their heads out too soon. Um, okay. So. My girl I'm, Natalie, she was, had a plan for that. Did she talk to you? Yes. Oh, good. Good. Um. I cannot share details. That's fine. I I trust uh, her. She knows her business. Mm-hmm. That's why I picked her for whip. Yeah. So but we have, um, it, just the biggest problem is that they have free fucking will. And yeah. And imagine uh, that. Yeah, and I mean, thank God I actually got to have a discussion with Mallory where he didn't sass me for five fucking minutes. You must um, have scared the shit out of him. Yeah. Well, I did. I may have. I I may have been severe. Um, <laughs> I'm there, filing this all away because you, know, a, <laughs> you find out the neatest triggers on people and I just file that all away <laughs> I mean sit down and shut your fucking mouth may have been said yeah um, I think what scared him most honestly was seeing me rattled yeah that was that was what yeah got him to actually Take it seriously for five minutes. And once we were done with the details, of course, then he like talked about my hair again. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, if you're going to do patrols, I suppose I'll go check out my new place. Oh, new place. Yeah. Before, before you go, Lily. Yeah. Can talk, I mean, just I just want you mentioned, you know, that uh, what you had Waylon bonded. Um, I yeah. just had some memories about, about that sort of thing when you were talking about it. Could you tell oh. me more about how, what that what goes on in the bond and how that affects you? Uh, well, do you recall if it was done to you as a kindred or as a kind? Willpower. Because it's a little different. You're going to fail the willpower roll eventually and it's going to be fun. I love that look on, on Locke's face. Oh, no. Three. Three? Nope, three's enough. Oh. Okay. You've passed on three a few times. Um, from She mentions that, and you were bound, but you weren't either one. You weren't kind or kindred. Oh. Somewhere in between. Okay, so a ghoul then. So Okay, so you were a ghoul and bound. Okay. Well, you've seen how my boys are. Mm-hmm. Excessively loyal to me. They want to protect me. But part of that is also because I didn't go into bonding them in a relationship. I don't know. I think some of them would be down to fuck. I'm just saying. Oh, I'm sure they'd be down to fuck, but I'm not down to fuck. So it's not <laughs> happening. I make them feel real good when I feed off of them, though. 
DTF like a motherfucker. (laughs) (laughs) But... Are you saying this was with Esmeralda? Yeah, because the memory I had was was definitely that of a redhead, and I'm I'm connecting the two. And, Locke, you have said that they were together. Yeah. Very much. Okay, so if Esmeralda ghouled you and had you bonded to her while you were in a relationship with her, and if it was a true relationship, very likely what she did is she couldn't let you go. Okay? After she was turned. She was attached. And... That's why in the Camarilla, we typically fake our deaths so that our loved ones can move on and we can detach from our loved ones. But, um, but anyway, she, she made you drink her blood. It Mm -hmm. gave you enhancements that made you a ghoul so that you had a little bit of perks of drinking vampire blood. Like my boys, they can take they can, you know, get a little bit of skill with speed or accuracy or their ability to sway a crowd, that kind of thing. Okay. They can also get a little tougher thanks to some of the other things I have available in my blood. But with you guys being in a relationship, your love would have turned, of her, would have turned into obsessively wanting to please her (laughs) and being obsessed with her. Okay. I know that feeling when Cassandra and, uh, yes, you do. It's like that. It's like what I did to you to protect you from Cassandra, but it's so much worse Okay, because it never fades. Yeah. Because while entranced, you know, that you know you've been entranced. The people who get entranced can realize afterwards, even at the time, they know it's not real, but they just You can't don't stop. realize it's not real. Okay. You don't realize... And it might be that part of it is real, that you really do love her and care for her, but it's so... It gets I twisted. Mean, it gets twisted. Like if we were in a relationship before she ghouled me, it just... It, it, enha- it made it magnified. Right, okay. To the point of twisting it. So, maybe that's why she didn't, like, just keep... I mean, there was the whole angry, like, somebody was going to be angry because you got turned and it gets, you know... That's probably it. why she turned him. But... Because she probably yeah. realized it was becoming a mockery of love. Because, truly... A blood bond is a mockery of love. That's that's a really awkward way to break up with someone. <laughs> I mean, unless I she's think... like trying to get back together with you, she she probably about... did. She... Come on, Locke, you've seen her. It's. I mean, she's what so I'm atta- is... she's so attached to her humanity. She doesn't think like a vampire. I was wondering if maybe that's why she has been avoiding him this long. I wouldn't exactly call her avoiding me. No, she's kind of throwing herself out there in front of it. No, yeah, like now it's all worn off and shit. Like what, it takes so long to like wear off. And, you know. I think she's trying to get him to remember her. And seeing if what he remembers is, you know. Do you believe that's the case? See, I don't know. I mean, my memory is so fucked up at this point. (laughs) I know it is. I know it is. Um, but, but sometimes it's not memory. Sometimes it's instinct. I mean, maybe you should go on a date. Oh, Jesus but, Christ. But, okay, look. Okay, look. Okay. This case, I, I'm Neil, gonna, I, no, no, listen, Locke. Okay, I see where you're going with this. And no. Baby, okay, Steve is not the Brian she remembers at all. A lot of guys are like that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, I not like that, this. I think maybe, like, just put them together. And I understand oh, they, I, they should talk. They had to talk, and I think that you know a neutral location that is maybe low pressure. Well, you say she comes to purgatory a lot. Uh, she is a regular now. Um. Uh, or is that not neutral enough? That's I. Oh, oh, that would be fine. Actually, actually, okay, okay, okay. That I would be fine. To, to sweep your your premises at one time that. Uh, because if something happened, then I would be there, mm-hmm. and I could 
You can I handle it. I can handle it somehow. And, and, you, and I've seen the bikers that hang out at your place, Lock. I yeah. mean, they might be kind, but they are some beefy kind. Yeah, they are. <laughs> um, and, um, and I mean, and Jack's there too. And Jack, yeah. I mean, he's... Uh, he's one punch. He, yeah, he's one punch. And he's also <laughs> like, you know... So I think that that would be a good neutral location for mm-hmm. you two to have your talk. And I can clear out any night. Mm-hmm. So that this discussion can happen, or we could just make a chance. If you really want to, if you really want to, like lifetime channel this bullshit up. <laughs> um, <laughs> just show up, looking, I don't know, dapper or some bullshit. Um, <laughs> let Lily dress you. Um, hmm. But but see, that's not going to work coming into purgatory. They'll all pile on. No, 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 man. You don't need to come through the front. I've got a back door. Oh. You don't. Lily really yeah, dresses like... him as a as a hipster to go in to purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is kind of funny when the hipsters come in because they do occasionally walk in because they're like, oh, this is so authentic. And then they learn how authentic it is. <laughs> um, and it's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I definitely saw the eyes that I got walking in. Yeah, although you two are not. The bikers are not going to fuck with you That's two. fine. That's fine. I, I figured as no. much, but it was funny. <laughs> and I was like, I was thinking to myself, boys, try me. <laughs> oh my God, they would have seen God. I know that for a fact. It would have just been like light bulb popping on. Doing the Toreador shit. Yes. Like, I will let you meet your God because it's me. Exactly. Um, <laughs> just make sure if you do that. Tell I them do try not to show off in your place. Okay. So. <laughs> oh. No, oh, I mean, I could at some point just come over to sweep your place on some pretense you actually know. i do kind of need you to sweep the place to be honest okay so and, and if i knew like on a specific night was better than others i could you know happen to be there on that yeah i'll give him a night that esmeralda usually shows up and she's part of your friday night crowd yeah okay and she comes dressed actually appropriate for the bar she's she got that part down Mm-hmm. She's not clan leather jacking it or jacketing it, but you know. All right, cool. All right, that's a that sounds like a plan that needs to happen. <laughs> so, doesn't have to be tonight or tomorrow or mm-hmm. sometime. That sounds like a plan. All right. Oh yeah, that's gonna be fun. And hey, by then I should have um, hair sticks at past point past a blood three blood bond three. So. Nice. Might be able to like actually take him out for a nice. Have, okay. have you told him who stuck him? Um, I actually didn't know who stuck him. I knew it was either you or Lily. Okay, that's that's good. Uh, it's he knows fi- it's off- fine if he thinks it was me. I, I told him you two are off limits. You're coterie members. I you know, and he gets it. Oh, he'll probably try a practical was- joke on me or two, mm-hmm. and then I'll get to play with him. It'll be fine. Don't no, no, destroy him. Then. <laughs> I'm not going to destroy him. Please, I don't destroy for practical jokes, okay? <laughs> I mean, I do have a sense of humor, okay? So, <laughs> you don't. Yeah. So. No, you don't, yeah. So it's fine if he thinks it's me, because if he wants to be a practical joker, it's much better that he does jokes on me than Steve. Probably, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I still ask him not to. Okay, um, that, I appreciate step. that. But if he decides he wants to try, he can. Yeah. So, okay. Okay, so Locke was going to go do her her Some patrols, patrols walk patrols. around. And she hasn't walked around the neighborhood lately, and she needs to get a, yeah. a feel for things. Roll your wit streetwise. Okay. Well, she's doing that, I know Lily is heading over to... Savage Garden. Savage Garden, that's the name of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are you going to do, Steve? You haven't checked out Lily's new place either, by the way. I haven't been here for a, a couple of days, so I'll do my... You're going to do your sweeps? Party. So you roll intelligence technology. Um, one, two, three, four. And I feel like I should just learn some of this willpower. So why not? What you got, Steve? Five. Five? Okay. Seven. Seven? 
you're doing your patrol and walking around, you know, basically doing your thing of being seen to the neighborhood. Uh-huh. And about a block away from the club, one of the, the local rabble rousers uh-huh. comes out of the alley. Hey, lock, lock, lock. Uh, two down. This is eight ball. That's what it's you know ball. him as, eight ball. Hey, hey, lock, lock. You ready to hear the, the latest the latest rumors you know and all? Fuck yeah. Seems like today down in the horror crew, seems like they're down about half their numbers today. Really? That's what the word on the street is. Word on the street, they left, they're pissed off, and uh, they've been trying to move into various other gangs around, uh, normally the ones that are opposed to the horror crew, uh, because they, they, they don't seem to like how they are being treated. That's yeah. what the, that's what the word on the street is. You know, that's what we're hearing on the grapevine this week. Yeah. Well, you see, um, any of them that seem to be interesting, send them my way, just for a talk. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. I just, just I know you like talk. to hear, you know, yeah. scuttlebutt on the street and hear what's I'll going on. I love scuttlebutt. So, you know, I like to, to slide you that the, the little infos, you know, because you do us favors, we do you favors, you know, you'll get yeah. us back at some point and hook us up, you know? Oh, absolutely. But I just figured you want to know this since, you know, that's your thing is you like to know all about what's going on the streets. I understand. So that's how you survive, right? You know, you mm-hmm. get your infos and, you, and as long as you got that info, you're good. But yeah, that's what the rumor is that the horror crew over in Northeast they're kind of hurting now. Very cool. Well, yeah, if you hear anything else, you let me know and you send uh, any of the former members. If I see any of them, sure. None of them have come to try to join us because, you know, we don't we don't get a, we don't try to run a big gang here because, yeah. you know, you've, you've put that clear that we got to keep our operations low key or else, you know, you come down mm-hmm. on us in this and here in DuPont. But, you know, if, if any of our affiliates, shall we say. Yeah. You know, any of the feeders come up and let us know, then we'll, you know, the minors, I guess you call them the minor leagues, if you're going to go the baseball route. The burps, you know. Yeah, you know, because we got to get our recruits from somewhere. Yeah. We like to grab them from the minors and, you know, if any of our boys, they try coming over that way, we'll let you know. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thank you, man. Yeah. You know, I just figured since I saw you, I hadn't seen you walking around a couple of days. I figured I'd let you know what the, the deal was. Oh, yeah. I've been busy. Um... Yeah, um, keep your head down. Just... Oh, you know, we always do. Yeah. So, she'll I, handshake. And... You do the, cool. the, the secret shake, the fist bump, the handshake, the elbow <laughs> smash. Yeah. You know, a whole, the whole list. <laughs> All that shit. Yeah. <laughs> All that shit. Because Locke may not know a lot of things, but she knows how to, how to do very street sign. And, you know, <laughs> that's what she does. And then you continue on your route. Now, Steve... Mm-hmm. Uh, you've done your sweep. You didn't find anything. Um, your equipment seems to be working fine tonight. Um, it actually seems to be a little bit calmer than usual about, you know, extra, extra, about other signals, interference signals. So now Lily, you get to your, hang on before I go, I tell Thomas, add an, add another guest to the list. I need to be notified if they show up. If either Kent or Anton show up. Yes, ma'am. Call yes, me. Ma'am. Thank you. I'll let you know. Thank you. And you head out to your Savage Garden. And I'm rolling with squares. Yep. And I got four. Four. It's a pretty uneventful trip over there. Okay. Um, but your, your new, uh, I'm not going to call it a club. It's more like a cafe slash, not even a bar. It's more of a cafe. It's, it's like more, a lounge. Yeah, a lounge. It is ready to go. You Perfect. are ready to open. Perfect. Um, you've got, there's actually advertisements up because Natalie's uh, attitude has, has provided you, even though she was a little bit miffed at the, uh, the, the, the name, name change. change. I yeah, know. She had to redo everything. I know. She's a little upset at that one, I but know. not upset enough to, to really, you know, do more than charge you extra. Of course. For the, for the change there. And but, I was good for it, so it was fine. But it, uh, you, I assume you have a manager that's, Yes. The handling it. Mm-hmm. Um, um, it's not open. Right. It's tonight. not open yet. But you have a manager. We still have to have the manager on site uh, answering the phones because the phones are ringing. Okay. People okay. wondering, is it open? When's it opening? Okay. You know, what's this all about? We're, they're seeing this this hype generated, but, mm-hmm. you know, is it really, you know, does Lily admit to owning it or is it one that she's kept 
as a silent owner in it. No, Lily admits to it. She admits to it. So then the, the questions are coming on the phone. Is it really owned the same as the Succubus Club? Mm-hmm. Same owner, and is it the same situation? Mm-hmm. So it's it's all a big thing on that one. Good. And as I'm wa- as I'm walking in the place, I'm just looking at it. I've designed it in a way that is very reminiscent mm. of a place I had in San Francisco. Okay. Years ago. Mm-hmm. But it's ready to go. Uh, you Good. think you could open it at any point whenever you're ready to do your soft launch, hard launch, you know, all that thing. Because mm-hmm. sometimes you got to do a soft launch just to tease people with, oh, you weren't on the guest list for the soft launch? Oh, my bad. Sorry about that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Okay. Good. It's looking, looking like it's ready. And I'm going out the side. There should be a veranda okay. with a rose garden. Okay. And with a fence around it to make sure mm-hmm. that people from the street... Yeah, it's walled off so yes. that it looks like it's part of the building on the front and side, but Yeah, so that people open. from the street don't mm-hmm. just start pissing on your rose garden in the mm-hmm. middle of the night, because D.C. Good. Mm-hmm. Good. Fantastic. You are set on that one. What is your hunger at, by the way? None. None? Okay. Okay. And you head back to your club after you've all checked it out and it's all ready. Mm-hmm. And when you pull up at your club, there's somebody you recognize out front. Man in a... Oh, it's a butler's outfit. It is the butler. I get out of the car. I tell Scott just to park on the street so I can get out, talk to him. What can I do for you, sir? You had a message and it was delivered. She requests you and your friend's presence. Well, we are down one now, but I'll bring who I can. That's fine. But okay. Come see her. You wanted to give a message, and she would like to speak. Okay. I will do so. Thank you. And he turns and he does that jerking kind of odd walk that he yeah, does. Yeah, that's not a masquerade breach or anything. He walks like a very <laughs> stiff old man <laughs> that maybe uh, doesn't quite know how his arms and legs work anymore. <laughs> So, Lily sends a text to Locke and Steve. The madam has requested us. Get back. Are you fucking kidding me? Nope. Tonight? Let's go. Let's go. Uh, Cars cars in the front of the club. Annoyed face, annoyed face, annoyed face. And this is where we're going to end this episode. Right here. (laughs) With you on a cliffhanger of what the hell does the madam want? This guy. Well, Lily had given her a message about spying. Yeah, that um, using I, her I, fiance to spy on I her told, was unacceptable. I told the ghost of my fiance that he needed to leave, and after, when he disappeared, I said, "And in case you're still here, let her know. If she wants that info, she's going to have to make a deal." No. Because well, because it was Vitel. If the freaking ghost was following me with Vitel, he would have killed Lily. Or the Vitel would have killed the ghost. Right, one of the two. Oh. Somebody would have Because if the ghost died. is following you, Vitel sees him on the other side of the shroud. Right. So <laughs> Lily knows that's not that's not copacetic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna end it there. And if you like what we're doing, of course, follow the uh, go over there in the chat. Give us a follow. If you got Amazon Prime, you can get a free subscription a month. Subscribe. Mm-hmm. If you're watching it on YouTube, subscribe there too. We're cool with it. Come hang out in the Discord. Uh, all the cast members are on the Discord. So are the guests. So are a bunch of other amazing people. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of good people. If you want to catch our old content, of course, the video to on demands are all online on, on YouTube. Links over here. Um, this Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, McStabber Studios has uh, Black Death Chronicles Season 2 starting at 8 p.m. Eastern. Yep. That's with Tam Shu, and it's our Chronicles of Darkness game, and he has an amazing cast of players, and uh, it's going to prove to be a dark game. Please come watch it. Uh, starting May 16th, 
On Saturdays at 1 p.m. Eastern, we have Ishvel with uh, a very skilled DM, Tiss, and her great cast of players, and they're going to be doing Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition every Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern, and we're glad to bring them to with Ishvel. So uh, we're so happy. Does anyone have anything they want to, to add to the end here? Uh, also, if you would like to check out other streamers that we enjoy content right, from, people. check out the list of friends that we've posted Over in the there. chat. Yep. <laughs> Anything you got, Locke? Uh, if you want to play Pathfinder 2 with me, ping me on Twitter, because yep. I know a guy. Yeah, because you're guy. doing the uh, the Q Times Discord Pathfinder through the, where you're, yep. you're running Pathfinder and stuff through there, which is cool. So yep. that, if people want to find more Locke. That's the place to do it. Mm-hmm. It's actually not more luck. Um, I play my disaster lesbian um, ranger named Rowan. Um, there's always <laughs> a little lock in your character. Yeah. Let's be honest. <laughs> so if you want some more of that, more of Katie, that's great. Um, yeah. We're going to be doing a race game here soon. I'm not sure when I've got to get it set up. I want to wait till the studio room is done. That's what we're waiting on on the race game because uh, I want it to be filmed. Uh, not with uh, as I want Urian to be back here locally to play Wraith because it's a dark game and he needs to be local because there's going to be a lot of decompression after those sessions. Holy <laughs> shit. Because it's rough. Um, but thank you all for coming. Oh, and, and also on um, later this month, I will be streaming a Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition one shot that is a newbie friendly one shot that I'm going to be running with some people that haven't played Vampire in a while and some that are brand new to the game. So a brand new storyteller with uh-huh. um, some brand new players. <laughs> and it's going to be Richmond After Dark. Yep. And it will have several people you recognize from uh, Black Death Chronicles and uh, Ishvel and mm-hmm. uh, some others that haven't been on stream Haven't before. been on stream yet. So, some totally new to it. Yep. So it's going to be an interesting th- <laughs> game. So thank you all for coming and we'll see you uh, Wednesday for the vignettes or Black Death Chronicles. Tune in for that because it's great. We love it. Good night. Bye.